finally saved up enough to buy a sintered top of the line lap to replace my last 1200 grit workhorse lap that finally wore out. I use the 1200 grit lap in every single stone I facet and I've gone through a number of them over the years. So I generally use a 260 to 320, 360, a 200, 300 range grit lap to start uh, preforming stones. Then I generally go to a 600 grit lap, then a 1200, then a 3000, and then depending on the type of the stone, I may go to polish or I may go to an 8000 and a 14000 and a 60,000 or 50,000 grit diamond. But no matter what stone it is, I always use the 1200 grit lap. So it has always been my go-to lap. And now I'm replacing it. For a new faster starting out, I would recommend you buy a 1200 grit solid steel crystallite lap if, if you have the budget. Um, if you have more of a budget, you may even get a centered lap when you're first starting. I would never, never buy a topper lap at the 1200 grit level. They're just not flat enough they're going to cause you problems. But depending on your budget, you know, a, a 1200 grit solid steel crystallite, or if you have, you know, a good budget, you can get the lap I just got. So I have been waiting for weeks uh, for my new lap, which uh, is replacing my 1200 grit lap. Uh, and I finally saved up enough coins to buy a sintered lap. And it comes from Tom at Adamus Facet, which is a division of the Adamus Instrument Corporation, Tom's company. Sintered uh, just means that there are multiple layers of diamonds embedded in the lap. So when the first layer of diamonds gets worn out, you know, you're standard lap you're done you go buy another one but with a centered lap there's another layer of, of diamonds underneath that first layer and that's re becomes revealed and it's like having another number of new laps ready to go when your previous lap wears out so tom confuses me a little by listing his laps in microns instead of grit um, which is just another way of talking about the the diamond content so 12 microns is about the same as a 1500 grit lap. Now I'm replacing a 1200 grit lap and that would equate to 15 microns. A 1300 grit lap would equate to 14 microns. So my 1200 microns is a 1500 grit lap. Now there is no such thing as a 1500 grit lap, but it's close enough to a 1200 grit lap. Grit and micron both refer to the size of particles embedded in an abrasive material, in our case, diamond particles. But it seems that grit can vary a lot internationally, as well as by manufacturer, as they have different standards, while micron seems to be more exact or universally agreed upon standard. So that's why Tom uses microns. So again, Bottom line, this 12M lap, 12 micron, is going to replace my 1200 grit lap. And this is going to be about 1500 grits in equivalent. Tom says to run this wheel or lap between 200 and 1000 RPMs with a fast water drip. Uh, Tom warns that if you run this wheel at too slow of speed, you may cause a ductile fracture on parts of the facet surface. And I think what that means in layman's terms is it is pulling parts of the stone off instead of grinding them. So run it fast, fast drip of water. The lap comes ready to use. Tom advises getting a special dressing stick to redress the lap as needed, but to call him before you ever try to redress your lap. Tom will be happy to walk you through the process of how to properly redress your Adamus lap if you ever need to. Okay, I've got a 
bowl here of uh, corundum and uh, this is a kind of a deformed bowl that's the reason I bought it normally bowls are like rounder and much smaller this one got deformed a little bit so years and years ago probably 15 years ago I bought it uh, because I was going to cut a bigger piece of pink sapphire than I could have otherwise with, with one of the regular size bowls. So this is a bowl uh, that I bought. A long time ago, let's see. Uh, try and get that focused in. So this is uh, faceters.com. This was Jeff Graham's old website. Um, so it's rather old that I bought this um, corundum bull. But this is what a bull looks like. It looks like that. That's the way the corundum, the lab created corundum or lab created anything grows under this type of uh, uh, growing it under this type of method. There's several methods. And then for corundum, it splits. You split the bull, and that's a bull. That's B O U L E. So when around the same time this one came out as a deformed one, I bought it up. So it's much bigger. And one of these years, I'll get around to cutting a giant pink sapphire on it. But for now, I'm going to use it to charge my new Ad 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 Adamus, Adamus uh, centered lap. So what Tom said to do is run it about a, maybe you know, pretty fast, about a thousand RPMs. Uh, use a corundum bull, which is because it's very hard, and just work it back and forth to knock off any of the high pieces of diamonds that would cause scratches. And when you're getting a pretty good uh, uh, facet look, that's when it's broken in. So I'll be trying that out. Let's take a look. He also said use lots of water. So, if we take a look, where I just worked on the facet, we take a look at your, the, the loop, my 20 power loop. I'm not seeing any major problems. I think it's, I mean, I think it's ready to cut. It's cutting, there's no uh, diamond sticking up where you would find one groove scratching the stone. You don't have that, I don't have that with this. So uh, I just worked it here. I worked it on this a little bit, same thing. And I worked it right here on the edge a little bit. Same thing, nice little, uh, doing a nice job of, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's broken in. Now the other thing with these uh, these laps that Tom said he also regarding the uh, dressing stick, use the one that comes with this for this. Use that dressing stick, not some other dressing stick. And the most important thing he said was he said you know what when you buy one of his laps you, you know you you can call him anytime. So. If you ever think you need to redress your lap, pick up the phone, call Tom, and ask him. And he'll walk you through it if you really need to do it. But if you don't need to do it, you, know, you, don't, you won't have to uh, potentially uh, mess up your lap by 
working it with the dressing stick if you don't know what you're doing. So that's the unboxing of our new uh, 12M lap, first one I've ever bought from Adamus. I'm anxious to give it a try. I've got some uh, Mahangi garnets that I'm working on that I'm almost done roughing, uh, preforming, and uh, I think I'll give them a try with these uh, this centered lap. We'll see how it turns out. And after using the lap, Tom recommends you use lava soap, the one with pumice, to pass the bar of soap uh, from the outside to the inside of the rotating lap several times uh, about a thousand rpms with a fast water drip and then spin dry the lap so it doesn't rust okay once you've used your new lap from Adamus um, what Tom recommends you do is spin it uh, with a, a good amount of water and use some lava soap going from the outside to inside a few times to clean off any of the schwarf that's on there. I'm going to run it around a thousand RPMs, which is fairly, for me, fast. The Altertech goes up to 1,600. I usually run it around here, but then I'll go up to 800 RPM. Then you turn the water off and let it air dry so that it doesn't rust. And you can see that it's drying as it right there coming out. And then you put it away for the next uh, use. Tom also offers a 32 micron and a 45 micron wheel or lap. The 32 micron is roughly equivalent to the standard 600 grip lap that I use, um, that most cutters seem to use. And the 45 micron wheel is again equivalent to a 325 grit lap. Uh, I use a topper, but I use something like a 325, 360, somewhere in that range. So. He does have two other laps that re will replace two of the laps that I currently use. So I'm really happy with my new 12M lap. And now I just have to save up enough coins to buy the 32M and the 45M. Happy fasting, everyone.